Hey, today we're going to make a bread called pão de douche. This bread dates back to the 1400s in Portugal on All Saints Day. It was um, a tradition to offer bread to lost souls of the world. And this tradition really took off in 1755. There was a horrific earthquake in Lisbon. They say it was felt as far away as Paris. It occurred on All Saints Day. Not only was there an earthquake and a terrible fire, as people fled the fires from the earthquake and went down by the ocean, by Belém in that area, a huge tsunami came in and wiped out thousands more people. So it was devastating to Portugal, even devastating, as we know, Portugal was a superpower back then. It was one of the reasons to the decline of that super superpower status. It was um, devastating to Europe and even led to things like the Enlightenment where philosophers like Voltaire would wonder like so many people in churches praying on All Saints Day, and most of those people died because they were in churches that just crumbled. So horrific disaster, and obviously a lot of homeless and poor people were left on the streets. So the, the idea of giving bread, of sharing with your neighbor, even became more popular after that 1755 earthquake. Today, you know, little kids go out similar to the way they do in the United States of Halloween, except they're not dressed in costumes. A lot of times they'll have little sacks that they make at home out of cloth. And they're given treats such as this bread or little broj, little like cookies, and three quarters cup of milk and hydrate our yeast. Yeast is a living organism, so it does better multiplying at a warm temperature. So I usually shoot between 105 and 111 degrees Fahrenheit. If it gets above like 130, you could kill the yeast. Now I'm gonna put two tablespoons of sugar in with the whole milk. Give that a stir. So this is at 115, so that is fine. Next, I'm gonna put in two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I usually have this bulk yeast. And about a quarter. And two and a quarter teaspoons is the same as one of these packets of yeast. Give that a little stir. This kind of just gives the yeast a quick start. You'll see that probably within five, 10 minutes for sure, it should start bubbling up and then we'll start adding our flour to it. As our yeast is rehydrating, we'll zest one lemon. You want about a tablespoon of lemon zest. Okay, our yeast has been rehydrating for about 10 minutes. It's really frothy, so I know it's good to go. I am going to put in my three and a half cups of flour in here. You can do this without a mixer. It's just a little easier with a mixer. Now I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of salt to the flour, one quarter cup of sugar to the flour, just give that a little stir. Now I will add in the yeast milk mixture that's warm. Now I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla. Now I'll add two eggs. Now over like medium high speed with the dough hook, I am going to let this go for about five minutes. So if you're doing this by hand, you probably need to knead it and it's gonna get really sticky for about 10 minutes and then add your butter and then knead it for an additional five to 10 minutes. Okay, it's been going for about five minutes. You can see it's, you know, very wet dough. You can add if it's too hard to work with, about another tablespoon of flour, especially if you're working with your hands. But it should definitely be tacky. And now we'll add in the lemon zest, one shot or one ounce of dark rum. Blend that up a little bit. You have a quarter cup of butter, half a stick, and you want to put in just a little bit of butter at a time and let it work into the dough. The butter should be soft, but not melted. And now you want to let it go at medium to high speed for about 10 minutes. Okay, that's been going for about 10 minutes. You can see it's still fairly sticky. I did add about 
maybe a two tablespoons extra flour. And now if you were doing this at home, you just could let it proof inside this bowl until it doubles in size for sure an hour and a half at 75 degrees. If your house is like 60 degrees, it's probably gonna take two and a half. I always think it's better to overproof a little bit than underproof. I put it in here just so I could do a time release so you could see the rise. I'm gonna take off and get my oil changed in my truck. Not sure how long it'll take, but I'm really not worried. I know for sure this could go an hour and a half to three hours. So again, don't be a slave to your bread. Okay, I'm finally getting back to my dough. It has been at about 75 degrees for about three hours. And I highly recommend at least going an hour and a half. And again, any yeast bread, yeast dough is highly dependent on temperature, the temperature of the surrounding of the dough, and also how warm your ingredients were when you started. So another trick I do quite often in the winter is I'll turn on my oven, I'll stand right next to it, turn it on, I'll leave it on, I'll count to like one minute, look at my watch. As soon as one minute's done, I'll turn it off. And for my oven, that brings it up to about 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. You could use a thermometer too. I just touch it on the metal rack and it should be between like 80 and 90. And that gives you a great proofing box during the winter. So I'll kind of like flour on my fingers. You should get about 10 servings out of this. They should be about 90 grams a piece. A little bigger than a golf ball, a little smaller than a tennis ball. And now you just wanna roll these into a ball shape. If you need, you could put a little more flour on your hands. I'll place them on a oiled cookie sheet. You could use a like parchment paper also. Now, if your house temperature is about 75 degrees, you could let these rest for between 30 minutes to like an hour and a half or if your proof box, if you get your oven going and that's at about 85 degrees, it'll probably just take a half hour to finish proofing. Okay, now while the final proofing is taking place, we will start the coconut topping. Put in one egg in a bowl. I'm gonna put in some melted butter. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of butter. Then we'll need two cups of grated coconut. It's about half of a 14 ounce bag. I will mix in the egg mixture with the coconut, the egg butter mixture. The grated coconuts are sweetened, so I don't need that much sugar. I'm gonna add one more tablespoon. If you're using grated unsweetened coconut, you might add, need to add about a quarter cup of sugar. And you just kinda wanna mix that together well. All right, next we're gonna make what they call an egg wash. A lot of times egg washes are used to brush on breads because it gives them a nice glossy appearance. So it's really more an aesthetic that done. Um, so put in one whole egg, tablespoon of water. The bread, I, I did make a proofing box in my oven for this final stage. So again, I with my thermometer, I turned on my oven for about a minute, turned it off and the temperature in the oven was about 85 degrees, and I'm leaving it in there for 30 minutes. If your house is at 75, you might wanna leave it at that temperature for an hour. If you wanna check out one of my other pastries from Portugal that I really enjoy, check out my video on pastege de Tentugal. This is a very old dessert from the town of Tentugal. It's fairly easy to make and absolutely flaky and delicious. Okay, now you wanna make sure your oven is preheating at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's up about 176 degrees Celsius. Now we'll brush the sweet dough with egg wash and put the coconut mixture on it. I like to put it in the palm of my hand, form like a little dome with a spoon, and then just plop it right down on top. And you don't wanna to press too hard on it because you, you don't wanna deflate the dough. After 20 minutes, my bread, I put a thermometer in it, it is done. It's about at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. But you can see it's not really colored up that much. So what I did is I turned on the broiler, the heat from the top, just to let it color up a bit. So I'll let that go for about five minutes, then take it out. In 25 minutes, 200 degrees, they're nice and golden color, it is done. Now don't these look beautiful? smells so good. 
took 25 minutes at uh, 350 degrees. I turned on the broiler just for about two minutes. Anytime you're using a broiler, especially with things that have sugar, you've got to keep a close eye on it because it could go from golden to burnt in a matter of a minute. So now you can make pound de Deus, bread from God. You don't have to wait till All Saints Day to make this. Give it a try any time of the year. Now go cook for someone you love.